friends, before I tell you my story, I need to know if we're on the same page. Can we agree that there's something wrong with the world? Can we agree that there's something wrong with the way we live our lives? Can we agree that each and every one of us is also a part of the problem? Can we agree that it's possible for us to change the way that we live our lives? Can we agree that each and every one of us can be a part of the solution? I, I need you to say. Yes. All right. Okay. Okay. Thank you for confirming my faith. Now I can tell you my story. So I've spent the last decade thinking about how we can change the way that we live our lives. Specifically, I've been thinking about how to change the buildings that we live in. Buildings are an extremely important part of how we live our lives. Buildings consume 40% of all the raw materials that we use and 40% of all the energy we use in our lives. Buildings also consume 40% or rather produce 40% of all of our carbon dioxide emissions and 40% of our ozone depletion. And these are US government statistics. So the question is, how do we change the buildings that we live in? Many people believe that new technologies can solve all of our problems, like the new high-tech city of Mazdar in the United Arab Emirates. While new technologies often solve problems, they also cause new problems, even bigger ecological problems, like this computer graveyard in Ghana. One example of this is asbestos. We began using asbestos products as insulation in our buildings about 150 years ago because it's flexible and fire retardant. But then we discovered that it also causes lung cancer. And that's why more people are dying from the dust in the 9-11 attacks than died from the buildings actually collapsing. So I propose that instead of searching for high-tech solutions to our problems, we look for low-tech solutions. Another way of framing these two opposite approaches to problem solving is by calling them eco and tweeko. So tweeko means only tweaking a few figures, just making minor changes. And eco means making major changes, really ecological. So tweeko means that the economy is a given and the ecology is a variable. It means ruling out any ecological solution that can't compete with a dominant economic model. Eco means that ecology is a given and the economy is a variable. It means all of our actions must be sustainable. And if it doesn't work with the current economic model, then it's the current economic model that's the problem. So if we're not restricted by the values of the market, then we have to ask ourselves what values are important to us. Health, equality, freedom. These are the values that we want to inform our solutions, to embed into our architecture. Health means healthy for the humans that live in the building, the humans that built the building, all the creatures affected by the house. It means healthy for the earth that the house stands on and healthy for the earth where the building materials were originally mined from. Equality means equality for humans and for other species. It means not taking more than your fair share of resources to build the building and not burning up more than your fair share of fossil fuels to regulate the temperature inside the building. Freedom means freedom from systems of control. It means that it didn't cost a lot to build the house, so you aren't crushed by debt. It means not having to rely on out-of-date municipal infrastructure to provide for your basic needs. So I spent several years crisscrossing the globe trying to find out what is the most ecological building material in the world. And it turns out that the building material that answers all of these is Earth, the actual Earth itself. And when I say Earth, a house made from Earth, most people think about a mud hut, like right here in Africa. Most people don't realize that something like 50% of the population of the planet either lives or works or both in houses made from Earth. This is the oldest church in the United States, 400 years old, made from Earth. This is the oldest home in America, also made from Earth. 
And this is the village of the Taos Pueblo, people indigenous to North America. The village is several hundred years old. All of the homes are made from earth. And in the southwestern US, it's actually quite common for Americans to imitate the Taos Pueblo and build their own homes out of earth. But Europeans don't need to adopt the building practices of other cultures. They have their own rich building traditions to draw from. There are over 100,000 houses made from earth in the United Kingdom alone. Most of them date back three, 400 years. Even in countries like the UK that receive a huge amount of rain, these houses stand the test of time. And because British building code preserves the country's architectural heritage, the houses are still being built from earth. So you remember this slide I just showed you? I said the healthiest house in the world is made from earth. So now I'm gonna zoom out so you can see what I'm talking about. It's pretty impressive, huh? So this is a high-end home built in a single season by a construction company. It would sell for about a million pounds sterling, which out to about two million dollars US. And inside, as you can see, it's very upscale and the whole house is made from earth. So why is earth the most ecological building material? So I've broken it down into six basic reasons conveniently arranged into an easy to remember acronym, right? So the first reason is that the earth is healthy. Unlike almost all other conventional building materials, earth is not toxic. It's healthy for all living creatures and people of all ages. And that's actually why we allow our own children to play around on the construction site. It's that healthy. Conventional houses are made from materials that continue to off-gas for decades, and we breathe this in for our entire lives. And that's just what they put into our bodies. If you think of what they put directly into the earth, the water, and the air during the manufacturing process, it's pure poison. So back to the list. Reason number two, efficiency. An intelligently designed house made out of earth uses resources efficiently. It doesn't waste energy on air conditioning. So to explain how this works, I've drawn a diagram of a house viewed from the side. And we're gonna take away one of the walls so you can see inside the house. That's a window on the right side of the house. So during the summer, the sun passes high in the sky so it doesn't shine into the house, right? But during the winter, the sun is low on the horizon so it shines through the windows and into the house. In the summer, the roof overhang protects the house from the heat of the sun's rays, so it doesn't heat up. But in the wintertime, it passes through the windows and heats the interior of the house when you need that heat. But that's during the daytime. What happens at night? There's no sun to heat the sky. So that's when the earthen wall comes in. In a conventional house made out of thin materials, the sun's rays only heat the air in the house but fresh air has to be recirculated all the time, so heat flows out of the house pretty quickly. Walls made out of earth are massive, they're dense and heavy. So during the daytime, they soak up all that solar energy that comes through the window, and they store it up like a battery. Then late at night, when the temperature drops, the earthen wall radiates all that extra heat back into the interior of the house, so it keeps it at a comfortable temperature all day long without any AC. This house, for example, has a long line of windows on the sun-facing side of the house. Inside the house, I took these photos in the winter, you can see there's a lot of light entering and hitting the earthen walls at the back of the house. In fact, it gets so warm in the winter that some people turn their earth house into a greenhouse and grow tropical plants indoors. Here's an earth house in the cold climate of Canada covered in snow. And again, lots of windows on the south-facing side. In Africa, South Africa, that would be the north-facing side, since we're in the southern hemisphere here. Quite comfortable inside the house, pleasant temperature, all day long, all year round. Next reason, affordability. Earth is the least expensive material, because you don't have to transport it very far, and you don't have to process it very much. Most of the time, when you dig up the foundations for the house, you can use the earth that's right there, right under your feet. Of course, earth is not the only component in the home, it's just the main material, so you can still spend a lot of money on the house if you're so inclined. For example, these houses in England are decorated with fancy furniture and all the latest gadgets, so the basic structure is inexpensive, so it makes it accessible to everyone, but it, the whole house doesn't have to be cheap. Fourth reason, building out of earth, low impact. 
Of all the possible building materials, Earth has the smallest ecological footprint. So let's look at some of the most commonly used conventional building materials by comparison. It's one thing to use wood appropriately, where it serves a purpose, where it performs a task that other materials can't, like roof rafters, for example. But there's no real reason to build whole walls out of wood. By building the bulk of our houses out of wood, as they do, unfortunately, in North America, we have depleted almost all of the old growth forest on the planet. Concrete is now the norm, the building material of choice for the whole planet. And concrete is made out of sand and cement, but what's cement exactly? Cement is made from rocks that have been burned at extremely high temperatures and then crushed into an extremely fine powder. The actual construction process goes a lot quicker, but the production process uses up a huge amount of energy and is responsible for a massive amount of pollution. If all you want is a strong building material, there's no reason to pollute and use fossil fuels. You can use the sun to dry the earth and making it rock solid. Recently, straw bales have been touted as an environmentally friendly building material, and they are. Let's see how they stack up next to earth. So straw bales are easy to transport, and they're sparsely packed, so they trap a lot of air, which is great for insulation. But unlike earth, they have very little mass, so they aren't able to store any of that solar energy. The other thing about straw bales is they're made from straw, an organic material, and then we trap that material in the walls of the house. But we need all that organic material to go back into the ground because industrial agriculture has seriously depleted the soils that we need to grow our food. So we can't sacrifice food for shelter. We need to fortify the soil with organic materials like straw, and we need to build our houses out of inorganic materials like earth. The fifth advantage of Earth as a building material is that it allows you to tailor make your home. You can personalize your own home, not by choosing check boxes, but by customizing it down to the last detail. You can carve wood into various shapes, you know, but it takes a long time, and if you make a mistake, you have to start all over again. You can also mold concrete into a whole number of shapes, but you have to build complicated forms, and it creates a lot of waste. But with Earth, you can literally sculpt the house into almost any shape imaginable. Now, that doesn't mean you have to have a hippie house if you don't want one, but you can make artistic embellishments that are far more subtle. For example, you can curve the walls into arcs and carve niches out of the walls. You can incorporate objects into the walls and build beautiful bas-relief sculptures. You can build built-in furniture, benches that are an integral part of the house itself, out of the house itself. No. Earthen houses can be rectilinear, indistinguishable from any other house on the block, but why would you want them to be? No other animal on the planet builds houses that are rectilinear, and that's not a coincidence. Structurally stable rectangles are not. By themselves, you have to add a lot of extra material to the stress points to make them that way, structurally stable, and that is ecologically and financially expensive. And arcs and spirals, much more structurally stable, and that's why animals all over the world build their houses in round shapes. It's also harder to maintain a fresh air quality and fresh, like a comfortable indoor temperature when you've got a box for a house. Round houses circulate air and distribute heat much more efficiently. That's why teepees are round, yurts are round, and shelters of indigenous people all over the world are round. The point is that building from Earth allows you to build your house in any shape you desire. Just like your favorite outfit fits your body perfectly. You can have a house that fits your daily activities perfectly. And last on the list of benefits is human scale. By that I mean the house is not beyond your abilities. You're perfectly capable of building your own home. It's certainly advantageous to have some friends with you and they'll probably be happy to help because it's a lot of fun. But having your home doesn't have to be this mysterious experience. It's left up to building professionals. It's paying people to build your house that makes it so expensive. But if you can build your own home, you can save a lot of money. And building from Earth isn't that complicated. You can easily learn the basics in just a few days. All you need is a simple set of tools. There's no need for industrial equipment. Now, that's not to say that you can't use any industrial equipment. In fact, sometimes it makes a whole lot of sense, especially if you're building a big house and you need to lift that Earth up to the second story. It can make things go a lot quicker. In Yemen, they're building up to eight-story structures out of Earth. And not just one or two, but whole cities of skyscrapers. These houses are hundreds of years old, and they've been building like this for over a thousand years. Yemen already went through a climate crisis. It used to be full of forests, and now it's a dry desert. 
and that's why they build from earth instead of precious trees. They've tried using concrete, they know what it's capable of, but it costs more money and it doesn't maintain an in, uh, interior temperature that's comfortable without expensive AC. So they went back to building from earth and they do it by hand without any electrical cranes, steel scaffolding, or modern technologies. And they will still be able to build this way long after the last barrel of cheap oil has been pumped out of the ground. I say that this is the future of architecture. 10 years ago, I was a computer nerd. I didn't know a single thing about the way houses work or how to build one. Today, I'm still a computer nerd, but at least I know how to build my own healthy house. This is Bridget. Bridget had a young daughter with no partner, no home, no money. 20 years ago, she took a course in earth building and she went out to build her very own home from earth. A few years later, her daughter Ellie decided she needed a bit more space, so at the tender age of nine, she went out and built an extension onto the house. So needless to say, they're living happily ever after. And if you think that building from earth might be right for you, but you're not quite sure yet, you don't have to commit to a whole house. You can build a bench made out of earth on a smaller scale. And building an earthen bench in your backyard, you'll learn the basics of what it might be like to build your own home. Or do it in your front yard. You'll be doing a good deed by introducing lots of people that walk by to the amazing possibilities of building from earth. And you'll also be creating a beautiful social space where people can interact and get to know each other that will transform the whole neighborhood. And once neighbors get to know each other, they're less likely to pollute and they're more willing to work together. And once we start working together, we're unstoppable. We all want to move in the right direction, but we're just taking baby steps and we need to start taking large leaps. We can still have size. We can still build houses from earth for all the people who need them. And we can still have grandeur. We can still have monumental architecture that honors all of our accomplishments. We can save ourselves and we can save the earth by building from earth. Because we can create another economy, but we can't create another planet. Thank you.